So today we're going to try to make some uh, stained glass art with our CNC and some resin. Hopefully it will come out better than the first prototype version. Um, as you can see there's a few bubbles and there's a bubble and a burn spot. Um, it's a bit bumpy and it's not squared perfectly. But this is the first prototype and you know you live, you learn. This is the image I'm going to try to make some art out of. Um, obviously we can't get all the small details, but we're going to try to get like the hills and the swirl and the moon. So yeah, um, the first step is to go over to the bezel and I guess this part's easy. And it's going to be easier if we uh, increase. This thing's going to need to be pretty thick, depending on what kind of bit you have. So let's go to nine. OK, there we go. All right, um, so that's the border. We can do the moon as well. And so for this one, This is why it helps to have a bezel app because you can get some pretty good curves. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, yeah, and you just kind of go through and do all the circles and lines. So once you're done with that, you'll have something that looks like this. And then the next step is to make a bit map out of it. And so you go to trace bitmap. So yeah, path, trace bitmap, and then up here. And then normally you don't have to do anything since it's black and white. so. You just hit apply, and that didn't work, probably because I need to have highlighted this. There we go. So you can see, you know, one of them is way darker than the other one, or less fudgy. So you can delete the original, and now we need to make this into G code. So we go over to extensions, G code tools. Um, we need a few things. We need the tools library, and it's just going to cover everything. As it does that, it takes a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to zoom out. Oh, that's the options. Oh, jeez. Okay, we've got the tools library. Next thing we need is the orientation points, which are going to be useful because you can't always trust this thing up here. Oh, maybe this time I can. It kind of looks close. It's 100 and it's 100. Okay. So maybe this time we can trust it. Um, and, you know, basically you, you're going to use this point here. Yeah. Okay. So now you know how big your... Uh, your pattern's going to look. All right, then the next thing to do is we go G code and we have to, oh, we have to set this up. So um, I'm finding that if you go balls to the wall, so feed rate of 500, and um, I don't remember these off the top of my head. I might be able to actually search for them. Yeah. So we need a M03 10,000. Basically, we're telling the spindle to start up at maximum speed when it starts. M05, we need to tell it to stop when it's done. And I find the depth step. I'm going to put that as a 1.5 and we're just going to play with it. 
Okay, um, that all looks good. And so now we can do uh, G code tools and path to G code. Let's give it a name. Um, Nightmare path. All right, and then uh, scale along Z axis. I have this as 1.2 and that should be fine. Okay, uh, apply. And there we have it. So the next thing you want to do is create a backplate for your CNC. Um, by a backplate I mean this kind of either wooden or plywood or particle board, whatever this is. You want it to be, you know, at least half an inch thick. Um, probably not more than like two inches because then your height is too low. Um, you won't really be able to go up and down. And that's just in case the CNC goes too far in. Um, you don't want to start wrecking your aluminum or run into your aluminum. I measured the aluminum plate at about 7 inches by 11 inches. And so now I've got my uh, cutter um, set to 7 inches. And that's going to be running this uh, particle board. But at first I have to take off this. Uh, metal thing that came with it. Okay, let's try it out. Next thing I need to do is drill these holes um, so that I can bolt this to the aluminum plate. So I made this easy for myself. Um, I just took the old board and taped it to the new one, and so the whole shell line up perfectly. And uh, yeah, and I put some foam underneath so I don't go through into. And there you have it, firmly stuck to the plate. Um, I suppose the smart thing to do would be to drill some countersunk holes and try some fancy screws and washers and stuff, but I don't have the equipment, so I'm just going to have to make my build zone a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So speaking of build zone, now we got to figure out how big to cut the acrylic, and it seems like about 9 inches by 7 inches. Make sure you do this next cut in a well ventilated area because um, this uh, acrylic starts to burn a little bit and so it releases some fumes. Okay, so I am warming up the glue gun and um, it's time to prepare the build zone. So make sure it's fairly clean and get some of that dust off. And basically we're just gonna put some like a layer of painters tape down. The next thing we need to do is replace the drill bit. My drill last drill bit kinda ended up with a little bit of resin at the end. Um, I suppose at some point I'm gonna have to warm these up and get rid of all that extra resin. But for now, I've got some extras, so we'll just pull that out. I usually just go until I can see it on the other side. So next we have to prepare the acrylic, and for that I'm using packing tape. The reason for that is because if I use painter's tape and then I put resin on it, then it becomes a super powerful substance that you can't peel off because the resin impregnates the painter's tape. And so, one, I found that this 
uh, packing tape works better. Um, um, it's actually peelable. And even if it wasn't peelable, at least it'd be see-through, so it doesn't cause any problems at the end. So for the next step, I want to visually plan out where I'm going to put this, because I'm not going to have a very long time after I add the hot glue to pop it on there, and I want to do it right the first time. Like, I'm not sure if you get a second chance at this. You basically just have to take the tape off. And, yeah. So that's ready. So now we put a butt ton of tape on here. And by tape I mean hot glue. So that file I made earlier is on the SD card. So now I'm going to pop it in. And we can start this up. So the first thing I want to do is get a good XYZ for this um, at the right place. And it looks like I hit the edge. So I'm going to pick a point around the edge of where I could go to. And I'm going to drill a hole there. So that if there's any problems I can always go back to the exact same point. And you may want to have to play with the Z height to get the right level, but um, yeah, so now it's set up, so now we have to tell it that's our zero, and okay, we should be ready. Let's see how it works. Okay, so the hard part's done. Now we just have to clean it up a bit and get it ready to the resin part. So the next step is to pick whichever side you want to be your back side of this and put tape over it. So... Okay, so the next step is to have all of your stuff ready. So you want at least uh, one stirring stick for each one of the colors you're gonna do. Um, you want a few cups ready. Um, the reason you want everything ready is because the resin starts hardening basically as soon as you uh, mix them together. And then you want some colors. Um, and I've, from what I've read online, it doesn't seem to matter if it's acrylic or this uh, oil paint or if it's, there are specialized resin paints too, um, it doesn't seem to matter. So then the next thing you want to do is pour out just a little bit of the, uh, I mean, it really depends on how much you're, you're doing, but I find that I tend to overdo it. So just pour out just a little bit of your resin into a few cups. So we have mostly four colors. We might do five or have like a fifth just clear color. So the next step is to um, add a little bit of color to each one of the cups and so I'm going to start with probably the smallest one because we're going to do the moon red and you basically just take just the smallest bit and mix it around and if you want you can add more later but it doesn't really take too much to color it all right so now that you've got your colors set up, we can start pouring them. And um, there's really just a few things to worry about. So 
Um, I'm probably being a bit paranoid, but I like to do them as I am ready to pour them. Um, so I'm going to pour the moon. Actually, I'm going to pour the moon last because um, if there is any sort of uh, leakage, I'd rather go out than in. I'd rather have that positive pressure. So I'm going to do the, the sky first. And so I'll try to pour about 50-50. And um, you want to mix this thoroughly. That's probably the, the hardest or the easiest thing to screw up when you're doing resin is not mixing them enough. Fortunately, I'm not really using that much here, so it's not too hard to, to mix these. All right, and then just be careful to try to get it in there as well as you can. Okay. Trying to clean this up later is kind of a pain. Yeah, like things, it's really easy to accidentally pour some out where you didn't mean to. And it, yeah, this thing is tricky. Okay, um, that's okay for now. We can come back and fill it in with a different color later. So let's do green next. So yeah, um, after letting it cure for about a day, um, you can take it out and remove some of the tape and there you go, looks pretty good.